Welcome to my talk, 3,000 Moodles, 1 million users, provisioning all the schools, or as it has to be called now, 1.4 million users as of last month. First, who am I? I'm Markus Samlenski, tech lead for hosting and systems administration at Elidia. I have seven years uh, experience in Moodle hosting infrastructure, CI, CD, and systems orchestration. Um, the situation was as follows. Germany is notoriously slow with digitization in the public sector, and only big challenges might change that. But now we all know a challenge arose. So, what was the mission? We had to rapidly draft and implement a system to provision Moodles for up to 7,000 schools in one of Germany's biggest states provision each system automatically by school request and build this front to back in under two months. So we had to do some design decisions. The first one is stability was key. There was no chance that the system, uh, there, there could be no chance for the system to crash on the first day of school when the load peaked. Therefore we said to us, we shall only use proven technologies, nothing too fancy, and first and foremost, keep it simple. This meant for us no microservices, no auto scaling, nothing too fancy. Um, we did use virtualization for the web servers, that, that means each school got its own machine. But we did use bare metal servers for the DBMS with high priority for I.O. Uh, the system worked as follows. A principal can request a system via a website and therefore trigger a process which creates these virtual machines via data center API calls. And finally, the, our orchestration tools would then provision these new machines and send the login data to the principal within half an hour of, uh, of requesting the system. Now, the bed. We have our CEO here on the left saying, let's call him Andre, saying, nobody's going to use this. We have our other CEO on the right being more bold, let's call him Ralph. I bet we have 100 systems by October. So, how did we do? This is a graph of all the systems provisioned over time. As you can see down there, there's a, there's a date it's from 10th. Uh, July of 2020 and 2023, September in the end. The graph goes from uh, on the y-axis from zero to, uh, let's say, 3,000. Here's our 1st of October. And as you can see, this is more about uh, 1,800 systems provisioned and not 100. So we were, in a way, lucky that our system and our design worked so well for this uh, for this problem, because obviously we were very wrong with, <laughs> with how, to, uh, how many systems were going to be provisioned. What about the, the users? I uh, told you about 1.4 million users. Um, these are the users per system uh, on a logarithmic scale. It means you see the, the number of the users uh, on the y-axis from 1 to uh, 100,000. Well, it should be to uh, the maximum uh, all the way on the right is actually 20, uh, 25,000 users. But as you can see, most of the systems only have about 10 to 50 to 100 uh, in the middle. And then a lot of systems have about uh, between 500 and 1,000, and a small amount have uh, up to 25,000 users. Um, you can see in the upper right there the, the graph of users uh, in non-logarithmic scale. It's pretty much just an exponential graph. Um, yeah, what were the results? We uh, had no performance degradation when the school year started and we had peak load. We were very proud of that. Uh, no weekend work was needed for our team when we launched. Very big success. What were our learnings? Well, no estimate survives the first contact with the customer. As you saw, we were off by about a factor of 15 to 20. Um, fighting scope creep was a mandatory skill to achieve in this 
uh, in this project we had really we really fight uh, every <laughs> everything with our customer to see how can we make this work in the time scale we have and finally uh, for these things we had to change we had to really uh, rely on our keep it simple uh, standard because uh, by focusing on the things we know and we knew we could achieve in the time scale, we could make room for some things that we had to change to make the project more uh, fitting for our customers. Finally, the green field is nice, but we're using Groven tools and pipelines is way more dependable. Uh, it is very, very easy to fall to the idea that on a new project you can use all the new and nice and awesome technologies and uh, it was a, well, this is pretty much a trap because if you have such a small time scale to achieve this and to have it, uh, have it scale and have it be stable, you should only use the technologies you have yourself proved that they are working for any scale. So how are we going uh, about this in the future? The system does have some negative points. It is it might be robust, but it's not very scalable. As you have seen, we had the servers with 10 users, and we had servers with 25,000 users. And uh, right now, we are only doing horizontal scaling for these machines. And also, our naive approach to these virtual machines is very wasteful. As you can imagine, all these uh, servers that had only 10 to 20 users, and they are using the same hardware as all these servers from uh, up to 250, up to 500 users. So there are many things that can be improved so that our system uses way less uh, of the hardware uh, per school and still achieves the same results. But it's very hard to have this uh, in a way, have the setup in a way that is stable without performance degradation when these, when these load peaks, when the school year starts or when uh, quizzes are happening all, all at once. But in the end, now that there's more time, maybe we will go for Q the Kubernetes. Maybe we will do the auto scaling and all the, the fancy tools we, uh, we can use to achieve these performance gains, these uh, scalability gains. Uh, yeah, I couldn't uh, go uh, too much into detail because of the time scale. But I hope uh, that we have now room for some questions to go into some more detail. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, we've got a lovely mic runner that can take a microphone straight to you. Barbara? So how do you manage support queries and those kind of things for such a distributed system? You know, when, when something goes wrong, what's the, what's the path of escalation? How, how does your support look for that? Well, there are multiple layers of support. Um, these, each system has a plugin installed where they, the user of the system can send support requests directly to our partners uh, which, who work with the uh, school system of the state. Um, if they are, uh, for example, how to use the system, see these kinds of requests, they don't reach us. Um, if there are things that are problems with the system on a uh, server level or on a, uh, yeah, on, these are these are then uh, escalated higher uh, up the chain. Uh, yeah, just multi-level support. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm interested in how you handle upgrades over so many different VMs. What's your approach to that? Yeah, we are using Ansible as, an, as our automation tool, and uh, we are able to pretty much just um, switch the code and do the, the upgrades in two nights for all 3,000 uh, systems. So we are just doing first all the odd systems and all, then all the even systems. And it's pretty much just an uh, automation tool uh, that starts at a specific time to change the code and run the upgrade. 
Uh, hi. Uh, we have the similar situation. I'm from Croatia, but we didn't take that approach. We have every school, 1,000 and 1,200 school on one system with eight uh, virtual machines, three uh, database servers and load balance and so on. So last year we transferred to OpenShift Kubernetes and it's much better than for us. Were you able to uh, weather the storm when the school year started and the load peaked? Many failed when this happened. We have this big systems. We have no problem with no that. No problems. And one question. How did you manage an authentication of the users? Do you have any centralized system or every school for themselves? Uh, right now it's every school for themselves, but there are changes to be made uh, that uh, one IDM will be applied to these servers. Hi. Were you the guys that were in risk of shutdown of the Landesregierung in Germany? There was this, uh, this story where one university built up this infrastructure in very short time, uh, but the, the uh, government shut them down before it, it was uh, not their job to do that. And that would be a very typical German stuff. Yeah. <laughs> story. Very typical Germans? No, 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 that's, that's not that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, who is responsible for the Moodle administration at your systems? Is it the school or is it some level in between? Uh, the, um, right now it is the school principal who is uh, assigned the uh, main admin account. Okay, so there, there were thoughts um, to change the management to the school admin to a manager account, but there were a lot of problems with restricting these accesses to these, to these uh, principles, so right now they are administrators to the system.